get into the finals and have a good showing. And I don't mind if we do lose the finals, but all I care about is that everyone in my team gives their best and that we just try and put on a good show. Coming off a 2-0 against Choke, going to the finals in Fuse, you think we'd be feeling pretty confident, but in Fuse are a really, really good roster. They've been unbeaten throughout the season. I think we can maybe take a game off them. If we're lucky and play really well, maybe two, but I think it's going to be infused coming over with the final, but it's all going to come down to who's the better team on the day. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. Tundra blowing his barrels after shooting shooting fires? <laughs> Making shots. After firing <laughs> shots at Chokes, analysts and coaches. I mean, that would have been a beautiful intro oh, if I'd only got it right. Munch. Welcome back to the stream. My name is Joseph Munchables Fenny, and casting with me again is Kiernan X Scoundrel Low. We're here for the third and possibly final game of our finals here. FM versus Infused. Infused currently 2-0 up. What Munch doesn't want you to know is we pre-planned that and it was going to be really good. It's going to be amazing. And then he, bl he blew it, I just like it. the shots. <laughs> he blew it. <laughs> but I've got I, I to say, Tundra in interviews, he has re he's really good in interviews. I'm, I'm really impressed with the way he's been on stage with Matt and also in that... I'm, Best yeah. Interviews UK. Best Interviews UK. If you don't come away with the uh, ESL Premiership... <laughs> he, gets, he gets Interviewer MVP award. <laughs> He gets the interview at MVP award. But it is the final game in the series here. A lot, a lot of talk about the top lane from the guys on the analyst mm -hmm. desk. And I completely agree. I don't think Alfari has been the sole uh, firing cannon for the infused roster, especially in this final. I think he's had a huge impact. But I think uh, I think there's just it's globally infused have just been a better team. They are just yeah. a more cohesive unit. And they've been playing at a higher level for a lot longer. If they win this much, this will be, I believe, 19 and 0 for the entire yes, ESL yes Premiership series season. That's, and zero. that's an unbeaten start to finish from the infused roster. Yeah, I mean, infused this, I, and it's strange as well because the very start of the se the second season of the UK Premiership was okay. FM had just come off the back of winning Epic Land. They were looking honestly dominant. They beat Infused, I think, 3-1 in the finals of Epic Land. And then throughout the season, FM didn't really seem to live up to the hype that they'd sort of built themselves. And Infused just seemed to be unstoppable. As you were saying, 19-0 and zero if they can win this game. 18-0 and zero currently. I would love for FM to win this one just for a closer series. And because as well, I think if, M if FM are winning the game, with their style of play, with their more macro-focused play, it's going to be such a close game. Yeah, the, the problem is that they're not ever getting to the position where macro play is coming in, yeah. is coming into play, so to speak, because they are losing out in the areas where the micro from Infused is just beating them out outright. You know, Billy was down 50 CS, I believe, at 10 minutes or something like that to uh, Alfari. Now, against Numlock, I said this again last game, against Numlock, that didn't matter too much because Numlock was on a champion like Renekton on Olaf. And yeah, the CS advantage is fantastic for him, but it's not in the position where you're like on a Fiora or a Gangplank. A 50 CS advantage on a Gangplank is massive. Yeah. Really, really huge. But that means that Billy won't be able to survive the damage that Gangplank is putting out. And Gangplank will be hitting item spikes way earlier because you're just not pressuring him. And Billy doesn't have the champion pool to pressure Alfari. And that is one of the key issues here. But also, we, we've almost completely negated the mid lane. Charlie T is almost single-handedly winning this mid lane without any jungle pressure. This is just a straight up 1v1 by Charlie T versus Zibiz. And I actually don't think I've seen either Max Lot or Kino spend any time in that mid lane. Most of it has no. been centered around the bottom and the top. We have seen like one or two kind of half-hearted ganks towards the mid lane, but nothing that really was substantial at all. Max Law gonna be locking in that Lee Sin once again. We've seen him do some pretty flashy stuff with that Lee Sin so far in this series. I mean, a highlight for me was when he jumped over the wall, kicked Kino away from the Baron pit, then jumped back in to smite the Baron. That was particularly stylish. But interestingly, I want to point out, Victor has been banned out here. So Charlie T opting to not go for that one this time, but also wants to deny it from Zivis. Yeah, because I think they wanted to pick up the Lee first, and they didn't want to give Zivis the Victor on the first rotation. Going to be... Varus here now. It's got to be mid. Yes, I've seen. I 100%. We know Zivis plays Varus mid, but I've seen Toaster play Varus AD carry. That is definitely a thing. It's exactly Zivis' playstyle. Yes, it is exactly Zivis' playstyle. I completely agree. But I think there is the potential for an upset. I have seen Toaster play 
AD carry Varus. Yeah. Um, but I, I agree. I think this is more than likely going to go into the mid lane. To be honest, I really hope it goes to the mid lane because Toaster is kind of the hyper carry of FM. And Varus isn't exactly a hyper carry of a no, champion. Very true. Like, I want I want Toaster on Vayne. Vayne hasn't been banned. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think if you're going to bring out the Vayne, bring out the Vayne now. This it is now or never. It's, it's literally now. now, or now. Or it's never. literally now or never. Because yeah. if you don't bring it out and you lose, you don't get another shot. Yeah. And I mean, we've seen in the past Toaster has done ridiculous things on Vayne. I mean, earlier on in the Premiership, I think it was, it might have been the end of the last Premiership, he got some ridiculous 1v4 Quadra kill. Yeah, I, there, there's some highlights out there on YouTube if you go and find them, I'm pretty yeah. sure they exist. Toaster it was basically pulling out double lifts, you know. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty difficult lane to go into matchup versus with Brown and Tristana. Um, it, unsafe for the vein to say the least yeah and also you've got to remember that, that we saw max law and impaler picked up on it when we had max law on lee sin the first time round. he said you know i'm not i wasn't sure about the the the, the max law lee sin pick but you pick lee sin because he's so good at isolating the ad carry threat and he did that against the Jinx. I imagine he could do that against the Vayne as well. Now, remember, Vayne has got slightly better positional uh, abilities, so she can try yeah. and negate those. And it is like nuances of positioning that allow you to get kicked by Lee Sin. I, um, I think the key thing, though, as well, in Lee versus Vayne specifically, we'll go on to the Corky and Bram lock in in yeah. a second. The key thing is Lee Grant's vision. So Vayne's yeah. final hour is kind of neutralized exactly, to some extent. Yeah. But let's take a look. Corky again, it's got to be Varus AD carry now. Surely. No, no, maybe. Or maybe brand mid. Yeah, Varus support no, 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 could happen. No. I think this is all At least top. <laughs> I think this is going to be... FM breaking the matter. <laughs> this will be brand support. I, I am pretty certain that Zivis might in, take Varus mid. Infused frozen intention right there. I know. They're, they're, they're not sure what to make of this. No, neither are we. Now, obviously, we've seen Corky mid from Zivis already, but Corky classically can still do very well in the AD carry position. And imagine that's a lot of burst in the bot lane to deal with when you've got a Brand and a Corky. You know, if you lock them in place for a Phosphorus Bomb and continuous auto attacks, it seems like it's a pretty good combo. Mm -hmm. But it can work with Varus as well. Looks like it's going to be Charlie T bringing out his Echo. First time in this series, and yep. it will be Alfari on Hecarim. So a scary, huge dive-heavy composition coming yeah. out from Infused right now. I'm kind of nervous for Zivis here. If if it is the Varus mid, if that is where they decide to put that into an Echo, that is going to be a very difficult so this, lane. This is, I can imagine in the brains, if they were thinking Varus mid, sounds like a really good idea, let's, let's get that early on. So they go for the Varus mid, then the Echo comes through, like, okay, no, Toaster, you're on, you're on Varus AD carry. Sorry, <laughs> we're taking Corky mid. <laughs> yeah, I could definitely see that. Obviously, Corky was on... Uh, the third rotation no second fourth rotation i can't count it was the fourth rotation so it, it was one of the rotations that happened during this chapter but the lane. corky and the virus were both locked yeah. in before the echo so i feel like ziv is I, I don't know i feel like this was a hole in the draft for fm they know charlie t loves echo it's like his most played champion but we'll see where the trades go about looks like toaster it might it, yeah. just be going for the virus. I have, I, I'm kind of just making it up as I go along here because the, there's so many flex picks in this FM lineup. Yeah, for sure. Now, like I said, I, I had seen Toaster play AD carry Varus before, so it is something that I know he has available in his toolkit. Um, I'm rather hoping Tundra and Kino trade. I'm pretty sure they will. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to mention it because they were just trying to troll us. I, I, I'm fairly certain of that aspect. But... Like sweating at the thought of Brand Jungle. Yeah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> But yeah, sorry, I completely threw you off there. No, no, absolutely <laughs> let's, fine. Let's take a look at the team compositions here. Okay, so over on the left, <laughs> that's the wrong way. <laughs> over, on the, this, over on the infused lineup, we have a pretty high uh, dive composition coming through. You know, you've mm -hmm. got Hecarim, you've got Echo. They work very well. They've got good tower push. It's not really a siege composition, but it's like a threat of a dive composition. So you stack them all up at a tower. You start attacking it. They're, if they're ahead, you're always going to be wary of the fact that Hecarim and Echo can very quickly get into your faces and make it a yeah. very bad day for you. The the the, uh, the other <laughs> lineup, <laughs> the FM lineup, is quite poke heavy. Um, you know, Varus, Corky. And then they've got Shen, as usual, Nutrion, a champion like Shen, try and provide a little bit of stability across the map. The, the better saving, the, the silver lining here for FM is that Nutrion Shen means that 
uh, sorry, going up against Hecarim means that it's going to be slightly less impactful, the farm going onto the, the Hecarim, you know? Yeah. But here we go. We are going to be heading onto the map for our third and possibly final game between these guys in this best of five. Infused already 2-0 up here. And FM, this is all or nothing for them. This is a game for, you, for Infused right now. This game is worth £2,500. That's a lot of money, yeah. you know? I mean... There are prize pools going up in esports all the time, but this is a fantastic prize pool for a UK event, and Infuse are going to be wanting to get their hands on it. But I've got to say props to FM. Regardless of what happens, I think we can all be pretty proud of how they've performed, considering the expectations of them coming into this with all the roster swaps and the uh, issues they had bringing their original roster to the table this weekend. I mean, yeah, when you mentioned the roster swaps and things, everyone was saying, like, Choke were pretty much guaranteed to get into the finals. Yesterday morning, when I was talking to people about the semi-finals, people were saying, "Yeah, it's going to be Choke versus Infused final for sure. No, no possible, no possibilities of anything else." So FM can already be incredibly proud of the fact that they got that 2-0 victory against Choke Gaming, and they definitely deserve to be here in the finals, creating this El Clasico of the UK scene. Let's let's be completely honest. Even with their original roster, they got pre beaten pretty hard by Infused because it, Infused in general have looked dominant. So regardless, FM have outperformed themselves, but they've probably got to the position that most people expected they would have gotten with their original roster because I would have said their original roster was potentially stronger than the choke lineup. I think regardless of anything else, at the very first sort of games of this season, this was the final everybody expected. Yeah, this is the final, versus yeah. FM. And I mean, it's like I was saying earlier, this is like the UK final. I mean, occasionally you do see Choke there as well, but typically this is the, as I said, El Clasico with Charlie T. He's just taking so much damage. Yeah. He is taking a lot of damage and it's a really good champion to pick into an Echo because you need to pressure an Echo. You need to either force him to all in you or he loses, you know, in this kind of situation. And look, especially look. early on, Charlie T doing a, uh, sorry, um, Ziv is doing a great job on this Corky of applying pressure. And actually we, d we didn't notice it, but Infuse went for the last one. <laughs> Nutri <Immediate>. immediately <laughs> flashes, having none of that as the rest of the Infuse lineup walk up. I think he was pretty aware that because of the lane swap, he could have been a target for a, a, a four man tower dive. So he's not gonna give up the kill. And he's gonna start to roam the jungle with his jungler. I think that this is just Infuse saying we don't really want to go up against the brand Varus lane because I, I really don't think <laughs> that we're going to be able to deal with the amount of poke and the amount of damage they can put through. And uh, it's a sensible decision from Infused. Yeah, I love how Zivis uses his Valkyrie aggressively all the time on this Corky. Like, in an AD carry position, the Valkyrie is always, like, saved as the last ditch effort to escape a fight, to reposition in a fight. Ziv is regularly <laughs> uses that to jump in and use the DOT. This might be a bit of a throwback, but I don't remember. Do you remember when Doublelift played Corky and, the, and he skilled up Valkyrie first in a level one engage and it ended up getting him killed? Because it actually does quite a bit of damage. Mini equalizer. Yeah, it's like a mini <laughs> equalizer. That's how Ziv is, it seems to be employing it so far. Charlie T having to use a lot of his mana so far just to be able to survive and CS in this lane. He's you already used all of his stacks of that Corrupting Potion, and uh, Zivez is still particularly healthy in this mid lane. Gonna return that turret in the bot lane now, and we maybe see some more rotations coming out. This is the first lane swap we've seen today, by the way. We saw two lane swaps in both games yesterday. This is the first that we've seen today, and I think it's less because of the top lane and more because they don't want to go up against this bot lane. Yeah, absolutely. It is going to be once again infused initiating that lane swap. They seem to be the team that is most comfortable in that scenario. But Max Law is heading back up towards this top lane. Nutri has found himself in a two versus one, and he doesn't even have his Shadow Dash available. He's going to be going down. Max Law, I thought he was going to donate it, but then he decides tried. to he, steal the kill. He really tried, but I think the, uh, the threat of Nutri getting away to under his tower. Yeah, I think it was just Lee Syndrome kicking in, to be honest. I think he waited quite a long time. For his it mind was telling him no. But his body. No, yeah. we're not going to go there. Let's not. <laughs> we'll, no. we'll spare your ears. No one wants to hear scoundrels singing on stream. <laughs> but you know, they burnt the flash of Nutri very early on, which meant that they could apply that kind of pressure. And Nutri stepped way up with no vision, uh, unfortunately making him a very easy target. And look at the wave that Alfari has made in his favor. He is 
he's, he's cropped this wave, so there is huge wave pushing towards him. He will get back to the tower to pick up every single CS, and Nutri now can't even commit in lane because he still hasn't got Flash. He's level two, he's forced to take the Krugs. This is Nutri way out of the game. A couple of reasons that is important. Shen will be delayed six. That means that there is time for Maxlaw to impact the rest of the map without having to worry about the Shen ultimate. Also means Nutri's getting less farm than before. He's on three farm, bless him. Yeah, he's not having a good time of it right now. Ziv is doing a good job to trade damage back onto Charlie T there. Charlie T unable to proc that passive, which is so, so important when it comes to Echo's damage rotation. But we could have a little bit of a conflict kicking off here. Max Law well aware of this bottom lane roaming up from FM Esports, looking to maybe try and put some pressure down onto Charlie T. But they are going to be spotted out and have to back away from this one. Yeah, Ziv is just doing his best to farm up. Parallel Convergence isn't going to land. Nutri level three right now. And Alfari is a horrible person. He is freezing that wave in the top lane. Nutri still doesn't have flash. He's going to get spotted out by that ward. Maxlaw already on that side of the map as well. This is not looking good for our poor little friend Nutri. Yeah, he's uh, not having a fun time right now. But luckily for him, Kino is heading up towards this top lane as well. He's going to try and make sure that Nutri can finally get into the game here. Nice little bit of poke coming out from Tundra there. But look at the damage Poyle throws out onto Tundra when he manages to land that explosive charge. That's going to be Toaster landing. And the Thunderlords as well propped off that. So he must have autoed twice before getting that Q. Yeah, and Piercing Arrow. Doing a lot of damage, like you said. Maybe right I there. imagine that. It seems strange that he would run Thunderlords. He, uh, I'm trying to think. You know, as as a Varus, you're not likely to spend too long, you know, autoing yeah. over and over again. Thunderlords may be uh, a potential. I mean, if you think about it this way, he does make use of the uh, bonus magic penetration that you get going towards the Thunderlords Keystone Mastery. I would be surprised if he is running it, but it, you know, the yeah. theory crafting is there. Munchy, the theory crafting is there. You, you we've, we've done a decent amount of theory you've, crafting you've, you've so far. You've definitely thought about well. it. And Nutri now the target. Maxlaw not level six, but this could be awful. Yeah, this is not good for Nutri right now. He does get the taunt, but it's just not going to be enough. <laughs> A level six and a level five. Like, a level so, three. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you know? Yeah. What else can you say? I feel so sorry for Nutri right now. He's just being bullied right now. But it's in, it's in no part due to some really useful uh, map awareness and play by Max Law, but also beautiful wave manipulation by Alfari. Yeah. It's just starved Nutri of experience. And this now, finally, he's going, to be catch, he's going to be able to catch up after losing two turrets but it means he's level three he's not going to hit level six until potentially 10 to 11 minutes at which point maxwell now has the opportunity to impact the rest of the map it reminds me of there was a game ages and ages ago where i can't remember who it was against but dyrus was playing jacks and just got completely zoned to the point where the game ended and it had like 20 cs or something this is very reminiscent of that precise game and really just how do you come back when you're this far behind? Because you can't even walk into lane without the threat of just being solo killed. Yeah, well, Nucci's trying to... Oh, I guess he doesn't have to walk into lane. He can see us from base he in this stage. He can see us from base now. <laughs> <laughs> Nucci will be safe in the realms of his own base. But, oh, you know... Ziv is might not be, though. Does have his oh, special delivery. So much damage coming out from Alfari on that Hecarim. He does have that special delivery. You are very right. So, there is the... Uh, potential for him to escape or impact a fight in that bot lane. He's going to go for it onto Alfari. I'm not sure that was a wise move there, Ziv is. He is going to Valkyrie back out again, but I don't know if he oh, escapes nice from stun. this one. This stun comes out, and there's Kino as well. They do get the kill onto Alfari, but it's traded one for one as the rest of Infuse arrives on the scene. Now Tundra is in a pretty awful spot, to be honest. He goes down as well. Toaster going to be capitalized on three. Are down already. Poil flashes underneath the tower, and oh. so does Charlie T. Chrono Break comes out to heal him back to full HP, and that is going to be four kills taken by Infuse. Give them an inch, and they will take more than just a mile. Yeah, I mean, the most important, the most important thing to note from that fight, we're going to just have a quick replay here, is had Nutri been six, Zivis almost certainly would have survived at least a little bit longer to put the damage out that was needed, and maybe even survived that Max Law Q, or forced Max Law to commit with that Sonic Wave as well. Charlie T just running riot on Kino. 
And this is this is all from Nucci being completely dominated in the early portion by Alfari and Max Law. And this is the kind of map impact that I was talking about when I said that without Nutri being six, FM had the opportunity to run Riot. Sorry, F Infuse had the opportunity to run Riot, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. Certainly is. I mean, already with a 4,000 gold lead at 10 minutes, this is a very convincing start from Infused. And I mean, the majority of that from that little skirmish just there. And that, honestly, that was such a questionable engage by Zivis. You know how strong Alfari is, and you just charge at him. It's like you've got your support brand coming over and like, hey, uh, Alfari is pretty farmed, and he's got the Phage, the Sheen, and Boots. I wonder if I can take him out with the special delivery. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can, but I'm going to try anyway. Stand United forced out there onto Tundra Nutri using that immediately. They thought the fight was about to kick off, but the second Infuse see that shield come out, they just back away again. And now we actually see a Hex Drinker coming out first item from Zivis. So different build path from what we saw last time he played the Corky mid. Kind of delaying the power spikes that he received when he previously paid Corky in the mid lane. But he's just now so scared of getting Oldlind by Charlie T. Looks like they're going on to Toaster. Yeah, they're trying to force something and they're going to be able to. Oh, <laughs> Look oh, at Tundra's oh. health bar. Alfari just destroying people right now. Nutri going to be the next target. He is going to be slowed down. Polk should be able to finish this one off, although he does get underneath the tower. There's a double kill for Max Law as well as Alfari is hunting down Tundra. Tundra doesn't have much time left in this world. <laughs> trying to do what he can, but it is going to be Charlie T coming to finish that one off. Nutri as well has been found out. That's going to be Alfari stampeding down the brand. That's going to be a tower taken for Poilk as well. This could actually end up being the quickest game of the series. And if this they is keep just, up at this rate. If they keep it up at this rate, definitely so. This is probably the, early, the, the biggest early game advantage that we've seen Infuse manage to break out. And it's all because of a perfectly executed lane swap on their part. Really well played. I haven't seen uh, basically a starve of that top lane. In, in, in ages, and it, it really impacted the rest of the map because it allowed them to go aggressive uh, without that Shen ultimate being available, which basically single-handedly won them the game, I would say. I'd say they were winning anyway, but that sealed the deal. Yeah, absolutely did. And Charlie T has fallen behind a little bit in this mid lane, at least CS-wise. Ziv is doing a good job. 25 CS ahead of his opponent right there. But honestly, it just doesn't seem to matter right now because Infused is so far ahead on the rest of the map that that tiny little CS lead doesn't make a difference because Charlie T is going to be able to just mop up these kills during these fights. He's already got two for himself. He's going to be looking for more. Max Law as well. I mean, let's just take a look at Max Law. 4-0 and 3 right now. Yeah. Also up in CS. He is not he's, messing about. He's, he's got for lucidity boots. So he <laughs> is... Uh... He's just looking to try and execute as many people as physically possible, get as many kicks off as physically possible. I don't know how much FM can do here. They haven't really got the best team composition to stall out, but they do have moderately decent wave clear, so I guess in that situation it's okay. Yeah, They're going aggressive here onto this turret. I mean, that's a, that's a ballsy move. Yeah, here they go. The fight is kicking off. Zivis, though, is already incredibly low. He's going to go down. Arfan, scumbag, steals the kill. And it's going to be Max Lord jumping to the back line. He's looking for Toaster. Oh, he he isn't going to find it, though. Arfan is, though, as he picks up the double kill. <laughs> what? The bloodthirsty support comes out. He grabs himself some points. And now Kino has found himself underneath the tower all alone. Stand United is not going to come in quick enough. Arfan might just be punished for the Steals no walks away from the tower in the end. Poilt gonna tank that one up for a little while as well. But it's not gonna matter because it's another three kills for infused and it's another tower as well. That was the ultimate juke by Kino. I don't know if you noticed it, but he went into repel and they thought he was gonna repel. Oh my yeah, what? what? <laughs> Did you see the damage on Tundra right there? Ziv is gonna capitalize though, trying to punish them for going quite so aggressive. There's the piercing arrow coming through from Toaster, saving his mid laner's life. And that is going to be a nice two kills picked up for FM. Yeah, a bit of shutdown gold. Maybe allow them to stall the game out a little bit further. But you only really see this game going in one direction, and that's downhill for FM. Infused them looking to secure that final grand prize for themselves. That £2,500, that magnificent trophy, and the title of the best team in the UK, having won out the UK ESL Premiership Season 2. That's what they're playing for right here, Munch, and they look thirsty. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and I mean, in the good way, not the bad way. <laughs>
I would know all about the bad way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you say that this is only going in one direction right now, but Infuse certainly showing us that that's what makes them beautiful. They are going to be going for the Dragon now. Max are going to be able to smite that one away. Seven and a half thousand gold lead for them. They've got themselves a Dragon. They've got three extra towers on their opponents. And right now, they're looking to be in a commanding position to start to push towards these tier two towers in the mid lane and in the bottom lane. Let's take a look at the numbers across the board. Alfari, after that fight, has picked himself up his fourth kill. 4-2-4 four, four on that Hecarim. 40 CS up on Nutri as well. Arfan has been caught out though. Chains of Corruption are going to lock him down and that is going to be a kill going over to Tundra. How did I not think about this before? The combo between Brand Ultimate and Varus Ultimate is huge. Have you ever thought about it? Chains of Corruption into Brand Ultimate. You lock people in place being nearby. Brand Ultimate jumping through champions and pr prioritizing champions. That's a massive combo. Never thought about that before. That's awesome. Especially in the bot lane in <laughs> the TV2 scenario. And the analysts are laughing at me like, how did you not think about that? <laughs> yeah, Impaler just giving us hand signals. Oh, Tundra. Yeah, uh... Don't even have time to commentate that one because Charlie T has started to one-shot people. He's finished his Lich Bane and just annihilates the health bars right now. But look at the damage coming out. Piercing Arrow as well onto Alfari. Max Lord trying to get into this fight, but I don't think he's going to get an opportunity to. Jumps away from that one. And now they head towards this bottom lane. All of the wave clear was in the mid lane for FM and Infused immediately capitalized. Oh, but there's the teleport actually. And this should be able to deny the tower. Nutri gets the taunt onto Charlie T. The piercing arrows are going to be flying out left, right, and center from Toaster. Kino combo misses the cocoon. And this could be crucial. Kino wow. just gets a Annihilated, repels away. He's going to be alive for a little bit longer, but Max Loss smites him down. And that's a kill for Charlie T as well. Oh. Alfari looking to finish off Toaster. It might just be Max Loss taking the kill in the end with that Sonic Wave. And it is going to be Charlie T grabbing himself a double kill. Max Loss narrowly escaping from that tower, but Tundra might just be going down as well. Ziv is trying to finish off that jungler, but he's just not going to be able to find his targets. Tundra arrives though, and actually it's Arfan that's found himself <laughs> in a tricky spot. Pathing going crazy right there. Arfan just trying to run away. The retreat pings from his team coming out, but I don't think he's going to be able to. Zivis doesn't have any mana. Oh, Max Law is on the scene, but he doesn't have any HP to work with here. One more auto attack will finish him. The flash auto ignite from Tundra just to get the kill. And that is going to be his third kill. <laughs> no, he's gonna okay. die. He was going to set the body on fire, but Boyle has arrived. Oh. I feel like FM potentially know that this is lost. You can see them laughing. <laughs> on the yeah. camera. I think FM are just enjoying the game right now. <laughs> Tundra goes to the BM on Max Lord and Boyle jumps out and takes the kill. Oh, that made me laugh. Thank you, Tundra. Oh, dear. But <laughs> the score is 19 to 8. Again, 7.3 thousand gold lead for Team Infuse. 2-0 in this series in our grand final between the classic teams of the UK, Infused and FM Esports. Let's see. If there's anything FM can do to pull themselves back into the series and maybe push this one into a fourth game, Poil just going to be leaping away from Zivis there. But little does Zivis know that Alfar is in the bush waiting for him. Just immediately takes him down to half HP and then gallops off into the distance. Yeah, you got to watch out for those bush ponies, mate. They're, uh, happens to the best of us. Happens to the best of us, of course. Um, I've got to be honest, there is a saving grace. They haven't lost an inhibitor as of yet. So these hard tower pushes coming out from uh, Infuse means that, you know, you would have expected Infuse potentially to work their way to an inhibitor turret. Oh, Chains of Corruption is just missing. The engage stopped in its tracks at the very start. I think that is literally the most missed skill shot of any champion in League of Legends. In League of yeah. Legends. I probably agree with that one, to be honest. Or oh, potentially, um, potentially, this stun from Echo as well. Parallel Convergence is missed an awful lot. But it's, oh, I sure. guess it's less remarkable because it, the slow field still goes up regardless of whether you actually get the stun. Oh, yeah. Well, I've got to be honest, this is looking like Infused are going to be working their way slowly but surely towards that final, final prize of the UK ESL Premiership. And what a journey it has been. It's not quite over yet, but they're definitely on the downhill stretch. And they just need to see it over the finish line. Yeah, they're on the final straight right now, but throws have happened before in the UK, and they can certainly happen again. I mean, with 
potential complacency as well could come into play here. We've seen both teams in that last skirmish kind of messing about a little bit, I'll be honest. If Infuse do allow that, allow themselves to sort of get carried away, that could actually be an issue for them, and FM certainly could come back into the game. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I mean, they have the composition that has multiple threats. It looks like Infuse going for a twenty-minute Baron here. Can't quite do it with three people. Maybe a little bit overambitious there, Infused. You don't quite have the damage in your back pocket as of yet. But Charlie T, he is looking like he's going to pick up his Zonyas on his next back. That will make him ever more the threat being able to dive in and then give himself a period of invulnerability. <laughs> Good word. Well, I, think it's like, I mean, it literally says it on Zonya's. It <laughs> does. <laughs> you become invulnerable. It was, more, it was more the way you said the word rather than the word itself. But we are going to see... Oh, actually, Arfan gets caught out. There's the chain of corruption. Look at the CC chain that they have going for them. But he's going to be able to get away. The Unbreakable keeping him alive. Ziv is casually underneath his mid tower, though. We'll be able to finish that kill in the end. Tundra just trying to set his own teammate alight. Oh, here oh, goes Max Law. Good flash from Zivis is going to save him from the insect, but Tundra has been found out elsewhere, as has his jungler. There's a double kill coming through for Pork. There's a triple kill, in fact. And Charlie T grabs one for himself as well. And I mean, that was that fight is just a perfect example of what a god lead can do because the health bars of FM just get wiped it's, it's, out. I actually haven't noticed, but it's 23 for 9. Yeah. But they're still not going to finish yeah. it quicker than they fin <laughs> yeah, they're still not going to finish it quicker than they finished the last game. They're actually going to go for the Baron and then potentially move up to that mid lane. Nutri may be going for the Miracle Baron steal. Here he goes. <laughs> yeah, he's jumped in a little bit too early and he's going to get <laughs> kicked straight back out again. There's the ace. Poil finishes that one off. It is going to be the Baron going down. They're going to go for the recall, buy some final items, and then potentially push towards the end of the game. They can at very least start to get those inhibitors down. Tundra just waiting for the minions to join him at his campfire. And they are enjoying their time there at Camp Tundra. They certainly are. And I that mean, was impressive. Support, yeah, that's a decent amount of damage onto that minion <laughs> wave. He is heading towards the Rylais, so we'll have a decent bit of AP, although Rylice did change build path, so he's not, probably not heading towards that, but Toaster nearly getting soloed by Max Lord. The Sonic Wave not quite gonna land. Max Lord doesn't have his flash. That is gonna be Toaster strolling away safely. Uh, spam pings coming out in every single direction now. Nutri making his way towards that mid lane, picked up that Randuin Zomen nearly towards his Spirit Visage, but the Baron minions are starting to do some work for Infused here. Can they go for the dive? It looks like Charlie T is going to head up to that top lane. And while he's there, it looks like FM won some sort of fight. <laughs> they do indeed. Tundra flashing for the stun. Pyroclasm going to come out, but it's only going to land onto Poilk. And that's kind of a whole lot just been used from FM. Max Law going to kick Kino kick. into the what AD carry. Alfari finishes him off. That was beautiful from Max Law. There's a double kill for Alfari. Nutri going to go down as well. Kino, the last man standing. He I, just, oh <laughs> I don't even know what that was. I think Kino just trying to bait them away. But look at his health bar drop. We just need to have a look at this kick again. There's nothing more to say about it. But it was so nice <laughs> into Toaster there. I mean, Infused are winning by leaps and bounds right now anyway but you can always appreciate a beautiful bit of play when you yeah. see it and Max Law right there just showing off mechanics just showing right off there. mechanics and it looks like they're going for the end Munchables they are indeed that's the first Nexus Tower falling FM are respawning but I don't think there's a whole lot they're going to be able to do about this one Charlie T going to use that Zonyas they're actually just going to bully them onto the Nexus and actually Poyle takes a kill on the fountain ladies and gentlemen Team Infused are going to take our Grand Finals 3-0 against FM Esports. I mean, I'm not going to focus on the hows and whys of that game, but I am going to say congratulations to Infuse. They played like gods this entire season. Undoubtedly the best roster in the UK right now. Each of their players individually talented, and I am hoping to see some of them move up towards the challenger scene. Maybe even the LCS one days, who knows? Keep your eyes on, especially Alfari and Maxwell. Those guys have played amazingly. Great performance by FM. Let's not take anything away from them. No one expected them to get here. No one expected them to make it to the final, and they did. They they played their little socks off, and especially Billy. <laughs> but congratulations, they look happy, and that's infused. They, they have won. Yeah. They have won that trophy. I think the key thing here as well is no hard feelings from either team. No. Hugs coming out there from Ziviz, but 
really strong performance from Infused. And I think a key thing about Infused throughout this season has been they've been consistently getting better and better. It's mm -hmm. not like they've just been a good team and just dominated. And here they are stepping up to their well-deserved trophy. We're going to see them lift that one victorious. Any second, any second now. There it is. Max Law is well happy with that one. Congratulations, Infused. You are our Season 2 UK ESL Premiership Champions and reigning champions defending the title here. Yep. Congratulations. New lineup, but still the same team. Well done to you guys. <laughs> there what? it is. The podium stolen away. <laughs> You're not putting that one down anytime soon, Infused. But we do have our great host, Lube, standing by with the players. He's going to run us through a winner's interview, I believe, in just a second. He's just going to be getting ready with the players to run them through what has been going on. We will be passing over to the main stage where Team Infuse and Lube are standing... Oh. I've been told we're not passing just yet. So, <laughs> well, do you know what? Like I'll little, slow this one down. Like I'll slow this one down. We will pass to. We will maybe Lube. pass. We won't pass, in fact. <laughs> but we will say massive congratulations to Infuse. They more than deserve this victory. 19 0 season. Absolutely ridiculous. Flawless. Absolutely flawless. Obviously, some of the games they didn't completely play because we had some rosters drop out of the tournament. But nevertheless, all the games they did play, they completely won and won in dominating fashion. The the closest game we, we saw were potentially between that first FM game and Exertus during the actual season. But apart from that, they looked absolutely untouchable. We've never seen a golf like this in UK esports, I think. And uh, hopefully this will be good for the rest of the teams. Yeah, absolutely. So our host Lube is standing by with Team Infuse to do a interview with our grand champions. And that from me and Excoundrel, it is goodbye. We'll see you later.